Good evening, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you now. Just give me a second. Okay. There it is. Okay, everybody, uh, take a good look. Um, let's start, but first I'm going to uh, call you names from the attendance list, which is here. Just a moment, it's loading. It takes a little while. Should I also open this? Okay. Um, okay. Just a second, please. Okay, here we go. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. I am here. Thank you. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Welcome. Elisa Arelí López Campos. Present teacher. Welcome. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present. Welcome. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Present, teacher. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Sandra Janet Vázquez Cortés. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. <coughs> Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Second time. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Present teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Present teacher. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. 
Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Ok. I'll do this again at the end of the class, as, as usual. We have two chat entries. Madeline says present. Welcome, Madeline. Okay, uh, your attendance has been taken. Okay, um, everybody, take a look at this. Uh, it's Advanced English 1, once again, and that's me, Ivan Doyan, at your service. This is session 12, okay, 12 out of 16. So um, this is the last session this week, and then uh, we finish the next week. So today is September the 14th of 2023, or 2023, whichever you prefer. And... Uh, uh, we're going to uh, start and we're going to complete the section today, okay? That's the idea. We're going to complete the section. So you have uh, uh, the starting point, which is city search, okay? City search. Complete the descriptions with the sentences below, then compare answers. Now, I know that this looks like uh, really small and uh, I'm aware of that. Maybe I can improve... Uh, Let's see, just let me check if I can improve. Um, the image a little bit. Yeah, I think it worked. Okay, so I'm improving it just a little bit so you can see better. I'm improving the contrast. So city search again, complete the description with the sentences below then compare answers and the sentences are a However, housing costs are high. A nice apartment is about $2,500 per month. B is, so even though our streets are safe, the evenings can be dull, like boring. Letter C, but be careful, in spite of all the late night activity, the crime rate is high. D, on the other hand, it can sometimes be difficult to find a job. E, although it's fast, clean, and cheap, it's pretty crowded during rush hour. Nevertheless, it's still the most popular way for people to get to work. And F, despite the nearby shops, you'll still want a car. There are no buses here. So what do you have to do? You have to complete the two descriptions right here with the sentences from A to F. So the first one is, this exciting large city with bustling streets is a great place to live. Most evenings, you can choose from a movie, a concert, or even a museum. Number one, blah, blah, blah. There are lots of jobs here, and the average salary is about $3,000 per month. So what about number one? What is it? If you have the answer, uh, please raise your hand, and you have a chance to, to talk. So who wants to try the first one? Mm -hmm. Gabriel I have an idea I guess it's a uh, letter A however housing costs are high a nice apartment is about 2500 per month okay um, close but it's not that one it's a bit different but thank you for participating do you have a second um, choice Gabriel Now, take a look at the sentence that precedes it. It says, most evenings, you can choose from a movie, a concert, or even a museum. Uh, it can be letter C, but be careful. In spite of all the late night activity, the crime rate is high. Yeah, it's letter C. But be careful. In spite of all the late night activity, the crime rate is high. Okay, because they're talking about uh, night activity, like they say, uh, going to movies, a concert, a museum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, thank you, Gabriel. So um, then it it reads: there are lots of jobs here, and the average salary is about three thousand dollars per month. What about number two? Okay, what is that? Who who knows the answer? If you know the answer, please raise your hand, and you get a chance to participate. We have a chat entry here. 
Saul says, teacher, I'm here. Okay, Saul, I'm taking your attendance. Saul Arnulfo, attendance taken. Thank you, Saul. Okay, um, let's continue. What okay, about, okay, all right. So what about uh, number two, who, who has the answer? I mean, you just need to choose from the list. Anybody? Hello? Any ideas? Any ideas here uh, to complete this? Number two, please. Carlos, thank you. Oh, teacher, I think some um, letter A. Yes, okay, number two is letter A. However, yeah. housing costs are high. A nice apartment is about $2,500 per month, okay? Yes. It takes okay, mo most of your salary right there. So thank you, Carlos. That's correct. Now Great. you have... Our efficient new subway system can get you anywhere you want to go. What about number three? What, which one would you choose? Uh, your options are B, D, E, and F. Rufino. I'm going to try. Uh, Please. For me and the letter, the letter F. Letter F. Okay. Uh, despite the nearby shops, you still want a car. There are no buses here. Um, thank you, but no, it's not letter F. It's a different one. Do you have a second opinion? Yeah. Okay. Or who can help us? It's not letter F. Again, the sentence is, our efficient new subway system can get you anywhere you want to go. So um, what about the sentence that follows? Which one is it? Is it B, D, E, or F? Well, we just stated that it's not F. So um, your, cho your options are B, D, and E. Which one is it? Who can help us here? Come on. Ana Cecilia. I am trying to teacher. Okay. I think little B. Letter so, B. B. So, uh, even though our streets are safe, the evening can be dull. So, even though our streets are safe, the evenings can be dull. Um, thank you, but it's not letter B. But thank you very much. Gabriel? Uh, your, mic your microphone is off. You need to activate it. I had a internet issues right now. Uh, ah, it's letter okay. E. Letter E. Okay, yeah, that's right. Letter E is, uh, although it's fast, because we're talking about the subway system, although it's fast, clean, and cheap, it's pretty crowded during rush hour. Nevertheless, it's still the most popular way for people to get to work. Okay, thank you. Now you have uh, the second paragraph. This is a picturesque little resort town with year-round outdoor activities. There is something to do in all four seasons, but there is not much action here at night. So which one is it? Your options are uh, B, D, and F. Again, the sentence is, there is not much action here at night. Who wants to try? 
we have only three options. The options are, okay, Biden. Thank you, Biden. And then <clears throat> Madeline for the next one. I think it's letter B. Letter B. Yeah, that's correct. So even though our streets are safe, the evenings can be dull, which is boring. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madeline, you get the next one. There are many uh, quaint little stores and boutiques. Okay. Quaint means attractive. Okay, especially something that is old. That's quaint. So there are many quaint little stores and boutiques. So, Madeline. I guess it's little F. That is correct. Okay. Despite the nearby shops, you still want a car. There are no buses here. And then apartments are affordable too. You can get a great place for about $1,000 a month. And average monthly salaries are about $2,500. So the last one is quite obviously letter D. On the other hand, it can sometimes be difficult to find a job. Okay, so that's the downside right there. It's the disadvantage. All right, uh, everybody, thank you for participating. Um, or thanks for your participation in the starting point, okay? Uh, now we're going to continue with this. Uh, uh, section 3.6, lesson objective. Everybody take a look at that. By the end of this session, participants will learn to use modifiers in the correct order. So what is what do I mean by modifiers in the correct order? I mean the right order of adjectives, okay? So how does this work? Take a good look. Order of modifiers, okay? This is uh, in the manual, or at least the first part is in the manual and the other part is not. So I'm going to share it with you via WhatsApp right now so that everybody can have it and study it. Okay. Okay, if you check the WhatsApp group, it's right there. Okay, so order of modifiers. So when two or more modifiers occur in a sentence, they usually follow this order, okay? And what is the order they follow? We're talking about adjectives here. Sometimes uh, you can use one adjective, two adjectives, three adjectives, and rarely four adjectives to describe one thing, one noun. So what is the correct order? You can just like, place them randomly. No, they follow a specific order and the order is here. The order is usually like this. Quality, size, age, type, and then the noun. And then if there are any descriptive phrases, you put them at the end, okay? For example, this exciting large city with bustling streets, okay? Bustling means like full of activity, very lively. So again, wh why do we use this order? Because first we have quality. One quality about the city is that it's exciting, okay? Exciting. Then you go with the size category, large, it's big. We don't have anything for age or type here. And then the noun. So this exciting large city, and then a descriptive phrase with bustling streets, okay? A propositional phrase in this case. That's the thing. A second example, a picturesque, that's a quality, little resort town with year round outdoor activities. So picturesque is the quality, little is size, resort is type, okay? The type of thing you're talking about. And then the noun, town. It's a picturesque little resort town with year-round outdoor activities. With year-round outdoor activities is the descriptive phrase. Also, you have the third example, a uh, rundown. Rundown is uh, in, in bad condition. That's the meaning of rundown. A rundown old port town that has seen better days. Okay, so rundown is the quality. We don't have anything on size. We have age old then type port is the type of town okay and then the noun town 
and then the descriptive phrase that has seen better days. So what I want you to uh, take away here is that you cannot use adjectives in whatever order you want. No, adjectives follow a very specific order. And uh, you're probably thinking this is difficult, and I agree with you. It's it's kind of difficult to think of you know the right order of adjectives when you're speaking. I totally agree. Um, I I really think it is difficult. It is difficult for me too. Okay, so don't don't feel bad if you cannot do this like perfectly at the beginning because it's it can be confusing. But the idea again is this. Okay, the order usually goes like this. You quality after quality you have. Quality adjectives, you have the size adjectives like large, little. After that, you have the age adjectives like old, new, vintage, antique, ancient, uh, modern, etc., etc. Then you have the type, resort, port, okay, colonial. That could be another one. Okay, and then the noun they are describing a city, a town, uh, airport, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, to be anything, uh, park, building, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then a descriptive phrase. Okay, this is a phrase that basically adds some extra description, and usually begins with a preposition or a relative clause. With bustling streets, with year-round outdoor activities, or that has seen better days. Okay, so that's the first part. This is what you have in the manual. But what comes here after is is extra. This is not in the manual, so. Uh, Sorry, everybody pay close attention to this. So uh, there are certain adjectives that you can also add to this list, okay? And if you want a more complete, say, uh, sequence of uh, the order of adjectives, you can try this. First, you have quality, like quaint, picturesque, uh, exciting, rundown, etc. Then the size, little, small, big, large, enormous, tiny, etc., etc. After that, you go with the shape adjectives. And what are shape? Shape means forma. So you have curved, round, square, etc., etc. Oval, all that. After that, you go with age, like old, new, modern, ancient, etc., etc. After that, you go with the color adjectives, brightly colored, or you can say red, blue, white, yellow, pink, all the colors you can imagine, black, all that. After that, you have the type. The type could be resort, port, um, colonial. Also, the origin goes in this category like Japanese, Mexican, Salvadoran, American, Canadian, uh, French, English, Russian, Chinese, etc., etc. Then the material is next. Material like wooden, metal, plastic, etc., etc. Leather, that's another one that goes in material. And after that, you have to use the noun like streets, hotels, fishing boats, all that stuff. And after that, okay, you have the descri descriptive phrase like with bustling streets, with year round outdoor activities. Uh, that has seen better days, etc., etc., etc. So that's the, that's the thing. So um, in this case, you have, for example, quaint, little curved streets. Okay. So again, what is uh, quaint? It it means uh, attractive. Okay, that's the meaning. Unusual or old-fashioned. Okay, that's the meaning of quaint. So quaint, little curved streets. You cannot say, for example, little quaint curved streets. That will be incorrect because you are not following the order. You cannot say curved little quaint streets, okay? Because again, that's not following the order. You have to go with quality, size, and shape. So you say quaint little curved streets. Next one is picturesque, old, brightly colored resort hotels, okay? This is the right order. You cannot use any other order because first you have quality, then you have age, then you have color, and then you have type, okay? So you have to follow this order specifically. And then uh, you have small Japanese wooden fishing boats. Okay, so uh, this is the only order you can use. You can, because size comes first, you use small, then the type, Japanese, then the material, wooden, and then the noun. You cannot say, for example, Japanese wooden small fishing boats. 
because that doesn't follow the order. You cannot say wooden Japanese small fishing boats. It doesn't follow the order. First, you have size, then type, then material. So you go small Japanese wooden fishing boats. Okay. So what are we going to do? Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to do the next activity. Um, uh, I know that this is kind of difficult to remember. <laughs> okay, so I'm aware. Okay, so um, you can check your WhatsApp, okay, in case you don't remember because you have the, the order here. Remember, it's always quality, then size, then shape, then age, then color, then type, then material, then the noun. And if there is a descriptive phrase, you put it at the end, all right? So uh, we're going to do some exercises and I'm going to give you five minutes because I know that this can be a bit hard. Five minutes to do this exercise. This is exercise 3.7, uh, order of ad, uh, modifiers. It's an extra exercise. So put the words in the correct order. So he bought a red house brick little in the center of town. So you have the words red house brick and little. You have those four words. You have to put them in the correct order based on this based on what we have here, okay? Just give me a second. All right, so um, based on this, okay, so everybody, again, you have it in uh, on WhatsApp. Please check your WhatsApp right now, your group, and I want you to do this. I'm going to give you five minutes for you to order the words in each of the four sentences. Five minutes starting now. Okay, to help you, I have just um, listed uh, the, you know, type of, of uh, modifiers here uh, at, at the bottom of this uh, slide. Buenas. Hello, Ana Cecilia. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Two more minutes.
All right, time to check. It's been five minutes, so we're going to check now. Okay, so the first one, he bought a red house brick little in the center of town. Raise your hand if you want to give me your version of it. What do we have? Elisa Arely, thank you. I think he bought a little red house brick in the center of town. Um, okay, he he bought a little. Sorry, a bit slower, please. <laughs> uh -huh. A little red house brick in the center town. Okay, um, but what are we talking about here? Are we talking about the bricks or are we talking about the house? Because the 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 determining noun, okay, is at the end. Should be at the end, right? So um, there's a little mistake right here. Who can who can help us with this one? But thank you, Elisa. Okay, uh, it's just just one little problem. Who can help us? Number one. Thank you. So, um, mm -hmm. second opinion. Who can help us with this one? Gabriel? It's, uh, he bought a little red brick house in the center of town. Yeah, he bought a little red brick house in the center of town. Why is that? Okay, because little is uh, size. Then you have red, which is color. Then you have brick, which is material. And then you have house, which is a noun. Okay, so little red brick house size, color, material, and noun, okay? Thank you, Elisa and Gabriel. Okay, number two, they're renting a cottage, pink, traditional square besides the river. So how about this one? If you know it, raise your hand, please. Anna Cecilia. They re re renting a traditional pink square cottage Beside the river. Beside the river. There is, uh, well, thank you, Ana Cecilia, but there is a little mistake in the order of adjectives. One mistake. So um, who can help us? Uh, we need a second opinion. Mm-hmm. Number two. It's kind of hot in here. I'm going to open the window. Okay. So, um, number two, who, who can help us, please? Vamos, anímense a participar. Siempre son los mismos que participan. Insisto, participemos. Lo peor que puede pasar es que no la tengan correcta y pues vamos a corregir y vamos a aprender. Okay. All right. So what about number two? Have you done the exercise? No volunteers, seriously? Okay then, here's the answer. They're renting a traditional square paint cottage beside the river. Okay, how does that work? Traditional is quality. Square is shape. Pink is color, cottage is the noun. Traditional square pink cottage beside the river. 
do we have any answers for number three? He hated living in a border town remote little with its wooden houses run down. How about that one? It, it, you have to order, there are like two sequences of adjectives that you need to put in the right order. So um, do we have a volunteer for number three? This one is a bit more difficult. Well, it seems you don't want to participate today. There's the answers then. Number three is he hated living in a remote little border town with its run down wooden houses. And number four is the town had many old cement buildings with dirty black steel roofs. Next, uh, Gabriela. I wanted to do the last one. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay, but no one was participating. So I. Uh, I know, but I, I <laughs> Okay. Well, next next time you tell me. Okay, you raise your hand and you say like, "I'll take number four, please." Okay, okay. in advance. <laughs> but thank you, Gabriela. Okay. Uh, let's let's review them. Number three is he hated living in a remote little border town. Remote is the quality. Little is uh the size. Okay. Border is the type. Okay. And town is the noun with its rundown wooden houses. Rundown is the quality. Wooden is the material, and then houses is the noun. And the last one is, the town had many old cement buildings with dirty black steel roofs. Okay, dirty is the quality, black is color, steel is the material, and roofs is the noun. So uh, that's the order of adjectives. Again, just remember, it goes quality, size, shape, age, color, type, material, noun and if there is a descriptive phrase at the end uh, you have to include it after the noun okay usually starting with a preposition or it can be a relative clause okay so um let's go for the next part okay we don't have much time so let's do this there's this activity that is in the manual but it's not in the it's not in the in the platform. So we're gonna skip it for now, but if we have time at the end of the class, we're going to do it. So let's go. Uh, 3.8, okay. Listening exercise, life in Sydney, okay. I want you to, whoops, this is not supposed to be here. <laughs> okay, life in Sydney. Listen to Maria and Ian talk about life in Sydney. Who seems to enjoy living there more? So we're going to listen to it twice. It's similar to an exercise we did yesterday. The first exercise is, who seems to enjoy living there more? Maria or Ian, okay? Everybody listen, I'm going to play it twice. The first time just identify who enjoys the city more and the second time we're going to do exercise B. So right now we go for the first one. Just let me know if you can hear it. Listen to Carlos and Vicky talk about San Francisco. Can you hear that? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Yes, teacher. Thank, thank you very much, okay. Who seems to like the city better? Hi, guys. Hi. Hiya. Thanks for agreeing to meet me here on such short notice. No problem. Well, listen, as I said to you on the phone, I'm doing a story for a magazine. I'm interviewing foreign students to get their impressions of Wait different cities in America. Uh, well, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I tape record our interview? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, then. Carlos, why don't we start with no, you? No, 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 this what is, do you think of this is the wrong audio track. Mm, I apologize. Just give me a second so I get the right. This is the one from yesterday. Uh, I apologize. Just let me get the right one. It's just going to take a minute. 3.8. Okay. But I believe I downloaded it from the, from this, from the platform. Let's see. This is the one. Listen to Maria and Ian. Uh -huh. Okay, no, sorry about this. This is not the right track. I'm going to correct it now. Just bear with me for a second, okay? Um, it's gonna be quick and it's gonna be ready in a minute. So just give me a moment. Uh, okay, here. Okay, just a second. 
Come on. Okay. Okay, now that's the one. I apologize. I got the wrong the wrong one. Animations, no animations. Okay. Uh let's listen to it. This is the right one, I'm sure. Listen to Maria and Ian yes. talk about life in Sydney. Who seems to enjoy living there more? How do you enjoy living in Sydney, Maria? I love it. I lived in a little mountain town in the US before I moved here, so I'm really enjoying Sydney life, and the climate is great most of the year. What do you like most about it? Well, for one thing, it's a very easy city to get around. The public transportation is pretty good, which is important for me because I don't have a car. So, you see, I use buses and trains most of the time. I can usually get wherever I want to pretty easily. How about you, Ian? Well, it's a very beautiful city. I love the harbour and the opera house. And the beaches are great, of course. Oh yeah, the beaches are great. There are great beaches close to town, like Bondi Beach. I know, it's true. But I don't have a lot of time to go to the beach because I have to work two jobs to make enough money to pay the rent. Actually, I'd really prefer to live somewhere smaller. I find Sydney too fast, too noisy, and definitely too expensive. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky, but my rent's not bad at all. Actually, since I'm splitting the rent with two roommates now, it's about the same as I was paying in the U.S. And, um, yeah, I love the nightlife here, too. On weekends, my friends and I usually go to a club or a place with live music. There's always something interesting going on downtown. I've made lots of friends since I moved here. That's great. Ian, what do you do for fun in Sydney? Well, not much, I'm afraid. It's so expensive to do anything here. Also, you know because of the high rents, I can only afford to live out in the suburbs. And there isn't much happening out there, believe me. Hmm. I guess once in a while I like to go to Chinatown, though. There are plenty of restaurants there where you can eat fairly cheaply. Good ones, too. Is that right? I can't seem to find cheap food anywhere. In fact, the restaurants near me are so pricey that I hardly ever eat out. All right, here's a question. If you could change one thing about the city, what would it be? The traffic, without a doubt. I used to drive back in my hometown, but I hardly ever drive here. There are far too many cars, and drivers are very aggressive. You have to know where you're going, and you have to drive fast, otherwise other drivers can be really rude. See, I don't have a car, so that doesn't really bother me. Actually, you know, I wouldn't change anything. It's so much better here than the tiny little town where I used to live. I don't know. Sometimes I think life is better back home. Sure, it's smaller, but it's easier to live a good life. And you get to know the people better, too. All right. Um, so uh, who seems to enjoy living there more? Is it Ian or Maria? Elisa? It's Maria. Maria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, it is Maria. Okay. Okay, now, uh, Biden. <laughs> The second is Maria and Ian. Uh, Maria and Ian. Oh, well, but we need to listen to it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play the track a second time so that we can do exercise B. But thank you, Byron. Thank you very much. And also, uh, thank you, Gabriel. I believe he wanted to participate. So, yeah, listen again. Which person has these opinions? Check Maria, Ian, or both. Okay, so the opinions are, number one, it's easy to get around Sydney. Okay, to travel from one place to another in Sydney. Is it Maria, Ian, or both? Number two, the beaches are great. Who has that opinion? The rents are expensive. Number four, it's a fun place to live. Number five, the restaurants are all expensive. And number six, life is better in a smaller town. Okay, so I'm going to play the track a second time. I want you to pay close attention and check who has these opinions. Sometimes it's Maria, sometimes it's Ian, and sometimes... Both of them have the same opinion. So uh, I'm playing the track a second time. Everybody listen and check the right answers. Here we go. No, <laughs> sorry, wrong click. Listen to Maria and Ian talk about life in Sydney. Who seems to enjoy living there more? 
How do you enjoy living in Sydney, Maria? I love it. I lived in a little mountain town in the U.S. before I moved here, so I'm really enjoying Sydney life. And the climate is great most of the year. What do you like most about it? Well, for one thing, it's a very easy city to get around. The public transportation is pretty good, which is important for me because I don't have a car. So, you see, I use buses and trains most of the time. I can usually get wherever I want to pretty easily. How about you, Ian? Well, it's a very beautiful city. I love the harbor and the opera house. And the beaches are great, of course. Oh, yeah, the beaches are great. There are great beaches close to town, like Bondi Beach. <laughs> I know, it's true. But I don't have a lot of time to go to the beach because I have to work two jobs to make enough money to pay the rent. Actually, I'd really prefer to live somewhere smaller. I find Sydney too fast, too noisy, and definitely too expensive. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky, but my rent's not bad at all. Actually, since I'm splitting the rent with two roommates now, it's about the same as I was paying in the U.S. And, um, yeah, I love the nightlife here, too. On weekends, my friends and I usually go to a club or a place with live music. There's always something interesting going on downtown. I've made lots of friends since I moved here. That's great. Ian, what do you do for fun in Sydney? Well, not much, I'm afraid. It's so expensive to do anything here. Also, you know because of the high rents, I can only afford to live out in the suburbs. And there isn't much happening out there, believe me. Hmm. I guess once in a while I like to go to Chinatown, though. There are plenty of restaurants there where you can eat fairly cheaply. Good ones, too. Is that right? I can't seem to find cheap food anywhere. In fact, the restaurants near me are so pricey that I hardly ever eat out. All right, here's a question. If you could change one thing about the city, what would it be? The traffic, without a doubt. I used to drive back in my hometown, but I hardly ever drive here. There are far too many cars, and drivers are very aggressive. You have to know where you're going, and you have to drive fast, otherwise other drivers can be really rude. See, I don't have a car, so that doesn't really bother me. Actually, you know, I wouldn't change anything. It's so much better here than the tiny little town where I used to live. I don't know. Sometimes I think life is better back home. Sure, it's smaller, but it's easier to live a good life. And you get to know the people better, too. Okay, now we can go for it. Byron, number one. It's easy to get around Sydney. Who said that? Maria, Ian, or both? Teacher, you have a problem in your microphone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. I apologize. I just I, I put it to a side. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, Byron. Okay, uh, the first one. Uh, it's easy to get around Sydney. Was it Maria, uh, Ian, or both? Who said that? Maria. Yeah. Maria. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it was Maria. Number two, I believe Gabriel wanted to participate too. The beaches are great. Who said that? Both. Both did. Okay, that's correct. Thank you. Number three, the rents are expensive. Who has that opinion? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Number yeah. three, raise, raise your hand, please. If you know the answer, raise your hand. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was Ian. Yeah, that's right. It was Ian. Number four, it's a fun place to live. Who has that opinion? Is it Maria, Ian, or both? Raise your hand if you know the answer, please, if you want to participate. Uh huh. Who wants to try? Okay, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. It's Maria, teacher. It's Maria. Yeah, that's correct. It is Maria. Thank you. Okay, uh, Gabriela, number five. The restaurants are all expensive. Who said that? Maria. It was Maria. Yeah, that's right. Very good. And the last one, number six. One more person to participate, please. The last one. Life is better in a smaller town. Who said that? Was it Maria? Was it Ian? Or did they both say it? Elisa. It's Ian. It was Ian. Yeah, that's right. Okay. There you go. Those are the answers. That's the listening exercise 3.8 that you have in the platform, which is this one right here. 
me show it to you. This one right here, it's a listening exercise. So uh, you, you have to listen to it and then you have to say who enjoys it more. Okay, Maria, as we have determined. And then it's pretty much the same thing. You just have to choose who said what. So that's that. Did you check, check the answer, please? Um, the same answers, okay, uh, that, that we just completed right now. Take a look. They're the same answers. Number one is Maria. Number two is both. Number three, Ian. Number four, Maria. Number five, Maria again. And number six is Ian. I believe it's the same thing. Okay, those Thank are the you, answers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's Thank the you, listening Jay. exercise. Okay. Um, so uh, for the next one, you have the reading exercise. We don't have much time. We're going to try to do it. Okay, so uh, back to the presentation. Where is it? Okay, here. All right. Uh, so we're going to do the reasoning. The, the reading exercise is a tale of two cities. Welcome to the oldest rivalry in Australia. It's like a competition between those two cities. You have Melbourne and Sydney. Okay, both in Australia. So um, uh, I need a um, couple of volunteers to read this. Um, I'm going to read the first paragraph, then you can help me with the next ones. Okay, so the first paragraph goes like this. Sydney has its opera house and harbor. Melbourne has quaint old buildings and parks. Sydney has spectacular beaches, but Melbourne's are less crowded. Talk to Melbournians, and they'll say their city is best. Talk to Sydney Siders, and they'll say Sydney is the number one place to live. Okay. I need a volunteer to read the second paragraph right here, according until two. Who wants to try? Practice your pronunciation, please. Number two. Okay, Gabriel, thank you. According to many Belvoreans, inhabitants live a life of ideas, discussion, and debate. People are active in the arts and live well. Then again, that's what Sydney Siders say about their city too. Thank you. Yeah, according to many Melbournians, inhabitants live a life of ideas, discussion, and debate. People are active in the arts and live well. And then again, that's what Sydney Siders say about their city too. Rufino, the next paragraph. It's a little long. It's, it's a long paragraph. So, <laughs> okay, Rufino, thank you very much. Okay. Top. Talk to Melbournians and they'll, they'll tell you their city has friendlier and more outgoing people than Sydney. Most Sydney siders won't disagree about their city being less friendly. Nevertheless, they'll be quiet to tell be quick. you. Sorry, they'll be quick. quick. Mm -hmm. tell, tell be quick to tell you that. You do that. It's a dynamic, dynamic, work class, dynamic, world class city with tons of things to do and see. Uh, Insane insiders say S S Sydney siders. Sorry, Sydney siders. Sydney mm -hmm. siders say that they are always busy enjoying all that their city offers such as the crushing sort of at Bundy. At Bundy, uh-huh. Uh, Bronte or Manly Beaches. Uh, Bushwalk throughout the Sydney Harbour National Park or browsing in Pendington's colorful weekend market. Yeah, thank you, Rufino. So the, I'm going to read the paragraph second time. Talk to Melbournians and they'll tell you their city has friendlier and more outgoing people than Sydney. Most Sydney siders won't disagree about their city being less friendly. Nevertheless, they'll be quick to tell you that it's a dynamic, world class city with tons of things to do and see. Sydney siders say they're always busy enjoying all their city, sorry, all that their city offers, such as the crashing surf of Bondi, Bronte, or Manly Beaches. Bush walks through the Sydney Harbour National Park or browsing in Paddington's colorful weekend market. Last paragraph is the longest one, so I need a volunteer to help me read this. Who 
who wants to try. It's a long paragraph, okay, but let's practice the pronunciation. Who? Gabriela. Where is start? Sorry. People. People in downtown, right? Yeah, everything you okay. see. <laughs> everything you see on the screen. People in downtown Sydney are always on the move, rushing to make contact, cutting deals, and gaining influence. In Melbourne, eating out is the pastime and the pace of life the is pace, slower. Sorry. The pace of life. Sorry. The pace of life is slower and easier. Melbourne may not have the great surfing of, of Sydney, the beautiful Darling Harbour, or the Opera House. Instead, it's low key and savvy. And savvy. And savvy. Mm -hmm. You have a, you have to dig a little to get under its surface, but once there, you'll find the perfect examples of a chic ultra modern city. Sydney looks international, internationally for inspiration, but Melbourne tends to look regionally. Mm -hmm. so Region, re to, regionally, sorry. Regionally. Mm -hmm. To Japan, for example, in a word, if you were to compare, compare them to American cities, American cities, Sydney will be sunny LA and Melbourne will be charming New York. Thank you, uh, Gabriela. So people in downtown Sydney are always on the move, rushing to make contacts, cutting deals and gaining influence. In Melbourne, eating out is a pastime and the pace of life is slower and easier. Melbourne may not have the great surfing of Sydney, the beautiful Darling Harbour or the Opera House. Instead, it's low key and savvy. You have to dig a little to get under its surface but once there, you'll find the perfect example of a chick, ultra modern city. Sydney looks internationally for inspiration, but Melbourne tends to look regionally to Japan, for, for example. In a word, if you were to compare them to American cities, Sydney will be sunny LA and Melbourne will be charming New York. So, um, and that's from uh, Melbourne and Sydney, A Tale of Two Cities by Stephen Townsend and Simon Richards, Rough Guides. After reading this, okay, there's only one exercise and basically it's nine o'clock, so we need to cook to, to do this quickly. Um, let's take a look. Uh, number one, it's a, it's a true false exercise. Okay, so we need to, it shouldn't take that long. Okay, so let's complete this exercise. I'm uh, taking attendance uh, one more time at the end and then we can finish and have a long weekend. So number one, Mo both Melbournians and Sydney siders love their city. Is that true or false according to the text right here? True or false? Mm. It is. Uh, who said that? That's true. <laughs> okay, thank you, Rafina. Always remember, I raise your hand. Okay, yeah, that okay. is true. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. It is true. Both Melbournians and Sydney siders love their city. Number two, uh, Melbourne is famous for its spectacular beaches. How about that one? Elizabeth del Carmen, Mejia, Torres. False. This is false. false. It's actually Sydney that is famous for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, number three, the pace of life is slower, slower, I'm sorry, for Sydney siders than for Melbournians. Is that true or false? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Gabriel. It's false. It's false. It's actually the opposite. Okay. Thank you very much. And the last one, Melbourne gets ideas from different countries in Asia. Byron. It's true. It is true. Like Japan, for example. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I'm just going to call attendance one more time. And after that, we can call it a day. So uh, where is it? Right here. All right. Um, Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Is Elmer Mauricio with us tonight? Elmer Mauricio? No. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Are you here? Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Is Gabriela Alejandra online tonight? Gabriela Lore? Yeah, you're here. Okay. Uh, and Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Is Wendy here? 
Wendy Carolina Calderon. Not tonight. Okay, uh, everybody remember that you should have finished uh, all the activities up to section number three by today. Okay, so where is it? Where is it? This one. Okay, uh, so please do the reading exercise, which is the same right here. It's true and false. It's the same exercise we just finished. Okay, and uh, send it, please. And uh, remember, everything should be complete up to exercise 3.9, okay? So that you're, uh, uh, let's say, uh, doing your part with a completion rate of uh, the activities to do in the platform. So um, everybody, thank you very much for, for, for being here tonight, for uh, uh, connecting to this meeting. And um, I hope you have a great weekend. You're going to have a long weekend. Remember, no class tomorrow for two reasons. Number one, yeah, it's Friday, sure. and we don't usually have a class. <laughs> and number two, because it's it's a holiday, so no class. So uh, thank you. Okay, and thank see you, you Monday. Take care. Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Bye-bye. Good night. 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 Good night.